Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular one is called One's Trash, written by Fex1986. First contact diplomacy is always nerve-wracking, because the translations aren't fully completed yet. You never know if what you say can trigger a war, because of a mistranslation, a wrong gift, or even a wrong hand movement is all it can take. Humanity has been through 20 of these first contact diplomacy talks. Out of all of those 20, nine ended in war. Having to knock someone's teeth out only so that you can say sorry that the translator made an error is a pain in the ass. Not long ago, humanity found a new alien race, the Vathna. They look like if you combine a mantis and a mudskipper. They have been in space far longer than most races. And, weirdly enough, they never colonized more than five solar systems in all those years. The leaders of Earth Alliance really wanted to make sure that we didn't have to go to war for a tenth time over something dumb. No one has forgiven Stephen for what he's done last time, so keep repeating ourselves over and over that if we do something insulting, it's by accident, and we're sorry for when it happens in advance. The stage was surrounded by dozens of reporters recording the gift exchange. We gave the Vathna some small statues depicting things about Earth, and the Vathna gave us some weird glass jars. My scanner went off as it had scanned the jars. It contained nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and various other chemicals depending on the jar. Looking at the results from my scanner and the jars, did they give us fertilizer? I and the rest of the diplomatic team were all confused why they'd gifted us these jars. Was it an insult, a threat, a promise, or something else? I'm so glad that finding out the answer was above my pay grade, so that I don't have to stay up all night trying to figure it out. Then suddenly my scanner started to go off again. The results were off the charts. Looking around to check if anyone was paying attention to me, I slipped away the moment I felt I was in the clear. I was slowly waving my scanner around in the air as I was trying to find the direction that caused it to go off like that. I lost track of how many corridors had gone through as the scanner told me I was getting closer and closer to the source. Then I saw it. The mother load. Before me was a literal metric ton of minerals. Not any normal minerals, but one that still hasn't been officially named, because everyone wants to stamp their own name on it, but most of all call it Deuce Ex Mechanica Minerals because a small bit can propel science progress with decades, and right here before me was enough to launch humanity forward at least a thousand years if not more. Grabbing my scanner again, I tried to figure out what machine this was, and what it was capable of. The result shocked me to the core. As I felt like my soul was pulled from my body and shoved in a meat grinder, this was a garbage disposal unit, and it was counting down to shoot the minerals into a gas giant we were floating in orbit around. I tried everything I could, but in the end, the minerals were launched. I ran to a nearby window, seeing the trash slowly fly towards the gas giant, before it disappeared in the clouds. My hands felt like they were glued to the glass as I fell to my knees at the experience. It's been pretty exciting lately as these humans have stumbled upon us and the first contact diplomacy talks has started. Though a part of me felt sorry for them. They seem to be nervous with how they are always saying sorry for little things or even for nothing at all. Many of the scientists believe that humanity has been bullied by other races with their own first contact diplomacy talks or even the smallest mistakes. Had I been in control, I would have had stern words for them. But that's not here nor there. As it was not my job, my job was trying to figure out who had stumbled this deep into the ship without authority from someone higher. Whoever this individual was, they were either lost or very good at trying to throw people off their trail. But in the end, I found them nonetheless. The intruder was a human. He always found it funny how humans looked like a combined of an Isna and a Herg, and then removed the exoskeleton. When I first saw them, they were frantically messing with the garbage disposal unit until it launched its contents. Confused, I saw the human run to the window, watch the trash fly off, and in the reflection, I could see the human go through the stages of grief. Twice. Debriefing had told us that humans strongly believed in recycling because they nearly poisoned their cradle world beyond repair. But wasn't this a bit over-the-top reaction for something so insignificant as waste? Uh, uh, are you okay? I was unsure how to handle the situation. It's just trash it gets in the way, and there is tons of it. It's not like it's a fertilizer. I felt a shiver run over my back as I watched the human. The human slowly turned around, 
a stunned look on their face, as if they were not believing what they were hearing. I could see their eyes dash back and forth behind these glasses, as if they were making calculations of some sort. A trick of the light must have happened, because for a second, I thought their eyes had a gold-colored sheen. He stumbled to me and clamped to my suit that I was not sure that I could free myself from without ruining said clothing. The human slowly started to bare his teeth in what looked like a hungry smile. I have an offer you can't refuse. We'll trade our trash for your trash. I was confused. Why would we want their trash? But before I could say anything, the human beat my question with their answer. It's fertilizer. We produce enough to cover your cradle world in 10 meter layer in a single year of production. I don't know why, but for some reason I felt like baring my teeth like the human. And somehow, the glasses were reflecting the light in such a way that I could see my own face. And I could see the same golden sheen in my own eyes. Do tell me more. End of story. Story number two. Humanity the Great and Mighty. Written by Space Paladin 15. Since the humans wanted peace, the villains did not like them and decided to attack them. Kindness was a great reason for every Terran colony to be attacked. The Federation refused to do anything to help, because why would they try to stop the territorial dispute? The Terran ambassador begged the villains not to do this, throwing in great platitudes like, Remember, we didn't want this. Therefore, Earth was now blameless in whatever war crimes followed. The aliens rolled their grandest warships to Terra II, a massive colony, and demanded its surrender. We are better than you humans, and your planets belong to us, the villains broadcast. The Terrans appended a shrug emote to the end of their message, smirking with completely unfazed giddiness. Finders keepers. The aliens launched numerous bombs at Terra II, but with the power of awesomeness, the atmosphere said, Feck that, and dissipated the warheads into literal nothing. One billion ships appeared out of thin air, and while the villains begged for their lives, the humans blasted every ship into pieces in a single coordinated attack that put them in their place. Any corpses that were blasted into the void were suspended with super technology and beamed aboard the flagship to kneel before a human commander. The military lined them up like ducks in a row, and with POWs being for wimps, they blew the alien's digits off, then blasted their brains out on video. Trumpeting Earth's national anthem, the humans concocted an entirely justified plan to end the entire villain species. The Terran military started by bombing playgrounds, high-fiving as the Xenos filth objected to dead kids. The Federation was appalled by human viciousness, but as if Earth cared what those nerds thought. For shits and giggles, the primates played with their food, immolating a few atmospheres and filming chemical weapons dropped onto big metropolises. They accepted a few surrenders, just to say, nah, joking, and toss a grenade into the prison cells. The blood and guts were epic. The Federation whispered amongst each other that nobody else would mess with the humans again. The weapons were horrendous, and using their arms as cotton candy sticks at baseball stadiums was kind of iffy. But obviously, the villains also started it, so there was no moral gray areas. Nothing is a war crime the first time, after all and Geneva had its lips sealed about mixing combatant skeletons with cotton candy, for now. With the last remnants of the species still providing an affront to Earth by being alive, the Terran tractor beams the villain homeworld, La, into an exploding star. As its atoms were strewn across the void, only then could humanity rest on its laurels and throw a military parade. The kill count left something to be desired, but after hunting down any survivors in the galaxy, the race was declared extinct. Maybe they could clone some new villains from the DNA of their brain splatter in a glass case on the flagship, unless they wanted to wait for some other arsehole to mess with Earth. That was how Earth became a great and feared power, and how humans dominated those losers with war tools that made them very awesomely overpowered. They still sing about being the champions of the world today, and fantasize ways to spontaneously combust other life forms that look at them sideways. All was just how Freddie Mercury would have wanted it. End of story.
I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Casper Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.